Hello again, Greasy Hammer here, and welcome to another episode on Mega Base Machines in Oxygen Not Included. I want to show you a factory which can produce up to 5 kilos per second of synthetic magma, which is coming out at a temperature of over 2200 degrees Celsius. And you might ask yourself, why? Well, the main reason I built this machine is to consume all the igneous waste rock. And this waste is coming in on this conveyor belt, and I really have nothing else to do with this igneous rock. So what we're going to do in this machine is convert it to very valuable hot magma. And we do this by crushing sand and then melting it to glass and then converting it to rock gas and then condensing it to magma. The boiling to rock gas is done by the metal refinery here on the side. Let me get you an overlay to see. Okay, here you can see all the areas. So first we've got the living area here with 10 dupes. They're working around the clock here. This is the steam box where they work. Their food just gets delivered to them periodically and stored here in the chlorine box. And they just eat here. And we have Atmos suits coming in. Anyway, enough about that. One thing I want to mention is that this machine uses a lot of ceramic to build and some of the pipes here, they inevitably break and they're made out of ceramic. It really doesn't matter what you make them out of. You can make them out of insulation and they will still break. And the reason for this is glass inside of these glass forges, it will cool and occasionally it's going to cool to the breaking point. And it's fine while it's inside, but the moment it hits this pipe, regardless of what it's made of, it will crack. And so I just make the pipes out of ceramic and you need a lot of ceramic to fix the pipes. But that's not a problem because there's a whole plant making ceramic around the clock and I'll post a link below to show you how to build that plant. Okay, let's have a look at this part in a little bit more detail. So here we have the glass melter. And like I said, it melts glass to rock gas, boils it rather. And then this happens in this bottom section and this additional heating is provided by molten steel, which I'll show you the plumbing in a second. But because before that happens, glass circulates through this window tile made of diamond. And what it will do is it will essentially preheat the glass and will also cool and help to condense the rock gas that's down here. Now this is important because you don't want this rock gas to get too hot and cause this area here to boil. This here is essentially a liquid lock made of magma. And you first can pre-fill this using magma that you just kind of pipe in. And once it's pre-filled, then it's fine. And you can also pre-fill this area below here with magma initially as well, just to preheat everything. And it's not gonna be a problem because that magma will then boil off later and condense here. These airflow tiles are important. They prevent the rock gas once it's condensed into magma from falling back down and instead it just kind of falls off to the side here and joins this liquid lock. These are made out of wolframite. Uh, it's important. Anything else will melt except for thermium, but we're not using any space materials in this build. And this particular plumbing is made of tungsten, but it's not radiant piping. And this is just to make sure we have a very like slower heat transfer. We don't want it too quickly or it's going to crack the pipes. These pipes here are made out of obsidian and these are made out of tungsten. Let me show you a material overlay. Okay, here we go. So we have a portion of this made of tungsten. Again, non-radiant, just regular pipes. And this part made of tungsten. This is out of obsidian and this part is out of obsidian. And this is again, just to regulate heat transfer, make it more gradual. This is essentially a counterflow heating, similar to what you see in petroleum boilers. But in this case, it's a glass boiler, effectively. Here we have a contactless pump, and it has to be this way because this is extremely hot. I'll, point, uh, I'll post a link on contactless pumps in the description below. But here's the plumbing overlay. So let's have a look here. We have, once again, glass coming in here. This is an obsidian pipe. You can preheat this pipe using magma at one kilo per second. And once this is preheated, it'll be fine because it's in a vacuum. And we have Again, tungsten, obsidian, and again, everything here can be preheated at one kilo per second of magma, including this pipe and all of these other pipes, everything. None of these pipes are using any insulation, and most of them are not even insulated in any way. They're just simply preheated with magma at one kilo per second. Now, there's a couple loops here. So again, we have the glass loop at the top. This is supplying glass, counterflow. 
this is the output magma here with a passive valve. I'll post a link in description below. And uh, Tony Advanced made a good video on the these type of filters. And then we have the output of magma into this tank. And then this here is the is the heater using liquid steel. It releases steel at two kilos per second. You can adjust this. Uh, you can adjust it to one kilo per second if you want to be extra safe. And the output here is cold enough so that we don't need tungsten pipes anymore. We can just use obsidian. But the input is important. It has to be made of tungsten. We've got radiant pipes, and then we also have feeder pipes made of radiant, radiant pipes made of tungsten. And the radiant, not because we want to radiate anything, that really doesn't matter, this is a vacuum. What we want to do is just save tungsten. Radiant pipes, we use only 50. And regular, radi uh, regular tungsten pipes use 100. So this is more efficient on your tungsten, because it's pretty rare. And if you want to see how to produce a lot of tungsten, by the way, check out a video. I'll post it in the in description below where I build a machine that produces as much tungsten as you need out of abyssalite, provided that you have lots of iron. So check that out below. But anyway, back to this. This here, this is a storage of magma on the side. And this is optional. You can do whatever you want here. And the output pipe here is at 4 kilos per second. This plant can produce up to 5 kilos per second. And... I just limited it here because the dupes are not 100% busy. You know, sometimes they don't do anything occasionally or they do other things. But the maximum output here is five kilos per second. Now this sensor over here is set to 2800 degrees. This is important. We don't want to overheat the steel. We don't want to boil the steel. And we don't want to dump too much heat into this chamber. So I found that 2800 degrees is, is a perfect um, sweet spot. If it's below this temperature, it's going to be fed into this metal refinery. If it is above this temperature, it's going to be fed into the hot tank. And the hot tank will then feed and turn into this machine here. Once again, this here is the hot tank on the right and on the left is the cold tank. Now below here, you'll see there's a little bit of extra plumbing. What's this? This is from a steel melter. This is molten steel. This is how you can very quickly produce molten steel by melting aqua tuners. I have a video on this machine. So check it out in the description below. Okay, once again, here we have the valves. Uh, this one is set to five kilo per second of glass coming in. This guy here, this is part of the passive filter at one gram per second. The steel is being fed into this machine at two grams, uh, 2,000 grams per second, two kilos per second. The output here is at five kilos per second of magma. And this is a liquid shutoff for steel, which is controlled by automation. And which brings us into the automation I want to show you. So one of the things here is there's this liquid pipe element sensor. And this checks if there's steel in the pipe. And if there isn't, it will shut this machine down. Because if there's not enough steel that's coming in to heat this, there's no point of filling the machine. It will just be filled with glass, which is not going to boil. So we don't want that. So let's have a look at this automation. Okay, first of all, we have a bunch of end gates here. These are all end gates. And we have the shutoff here for the molten glass. And we have the shutoff here, which you can't see, but there it is for the steel. We have four end gates. <clears throat> we have a thermal sensor here, which is set to 2359 degrees. And this, if it gets too cold, it will open up the valve for the steel to come in. And this here is the pressure sensor. And it needs to check if the liquid here is above zero. If there is no liquid here, this is not going to turn on. We want at least a little bit of liquid here. So if it's all rock gas, this will stop the heating regardless. The next thing here is we want to make sure that this reservoir is not full and that this reservoir up here is... Um, this reservoir here is, is for a different setup, actually. This reservoir, if it gets too full, it will shut off these glass forges because what we don't want is glass sitting in these pipes. So this prevents glass sitting in the pipes above. Over here we have the contactless pump, which only kicks in if there is enough magma sitting here. This is made of tungsten, by the way. And if it's above 500 kilos, the pump will kick in as long as this reservoir is low enough. If it gets full, the pump will stop pumping. Oh yes, and one other thing I want to mention. This actually I discovered by accident. This mini liquid pump over here, which runs almost never, so if you look here, actually shows zero here, but it does run very occasionally. This is because very occasionally there's this glitch where a bead of magma, a tiny little bead of magma will form right here. And this pump can remove it and then pump it back into this pipe here. 
Now, this bead is so small that it will not run off, and this pump is essentially contactless in a different way, so it can pump this bead without touching it so it never boils or it never overheats and melts. And that's it. Basically, we have a process here. Just to kind of summarize, we've got igneous rock coming in right here, 20 kilos per second. It loses a bunch of heat in the process here through these gold tiles, and then that heat is removed by the steam turbines. It's coming in at about under 200 degrees. So once most of the heat has been removed, it's safe enough to enter here. We want to make sure that the temperature in this box is below 275, otherwise things will start breaking. They're made out of steel or ceramic, which can sustain up to 275 degrees. So then the next thing that happens is this igneous rock gets crushed into sand. Sand goes onto another conveyor belt to feed these glass forges. Glass feeds into this machine. It boils it to rock gas. That converts it to magma. And then that magma gets fed into the rest of the system using plumbing here. And I'll show you what this magma can be used for. There's a few uses, but I'll make a separate video about that. And I'm hoping that you found this video useful. And if you want to build this machine, go, go nuts. And post in the comments below what you make and as well as any improvements you make. And if you like this video, then subscribe, hit the like button, and share it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.